Hi, we're a half of Brother Film Co. Um, we're a film and music production company. Um, we're going to be talking about kind of the last five or six years of our journey, how we got to where we are. Um, hopefully, sharing some useful insight about how we went kind of starting out as a one-person freelancing to growing to kind of a four-person production company um, and kind of our journey along the way. Hello. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Adam. This is Luke, Marcus, and Hugo, um, and we are Brother. So we're a film and music production company from Peckham. Um, you're potentially wondering why there's four of us stuck up here in a talk about going solo. Um, but that is how we started out. Um, and also that is, I think, going solo is about how to build a business for yourself um, and be your own boss. And I think that's what we do. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about kind of what we've been up to for the last five or six years. Um, we'll kind of talk you through our story, um, hopefully share some interesting, useful insight. Um, so before we start, I just want to show you a really short film about us. This is Brother Film Co. Well, actually, this is Brother Film Co. But let's start at the beginning. Way back in 2001, when baggy jeans were in, three brothers called Marcus, Luke and Hugo discovered the camcorder and a seed was sown. A few years and some questionable skate movies later, the boys went off to university and met a chap called Adam. We'll come back to him in a bit. None of them studied filmmaking. Hugo did, however, study music. It turned out he was pretty good. And Annie Mack thought so too, so she played his music on the radio. He even composed a soundtrack to this film. Anyway, where were we? Eventually, some enterprising fellow paid the brothers to make a video. Finally, the boys had made it official, and now they needed some clients. Adam was working at a ski company, so they made him a film. Then he moved to Red Bull, so they made him another film. People said they liked their films, so they made even more films. Brand films, fashion films, sports films, car films, food films, music films, event films. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the truck. That truck. Brand seemed to like working with a small company like Brother. Adam liked working with them so much that he asked to come and work with them all the time. These brothers have been making videos and music together since they were seven years old. This isn't just a creative team. This is a family. So yeah, so I'm Luke, I'm the middle brother of these three, um, and hopefully that gives you quite a good flavour for what we do now. Um, but I guess our main story starts kind of five and a half years ago when I was graduating from uni, so that's when I guess this formed officially. Um, so, so yeah, I graduated from uni, I studied property development which is completely unrelated and has served me in no way whatsoever. Um, but yeah, graduated, didn't really see how I wanted to go into that industry, didn't feel like the right fit. Um, and filmmaking was had, had been like a, a hobby for about eight years before that point. And we'd done it in kind of uni holidays, school holidays, pretty much any time we were kind of together. Um, so yeah, at that point, I moved back home, um, didn't have any real risk, so it felt like a dream job that we might do in, in, the, in the future, I guess, but then when I didn't have anything lined up, um, <clears throat> it, was, it was something that I thought I may as well give a go, didn't have any risk, so I kind of jumped into it full time, right, right from the off, um, kind of utilized all our friends, family, that kind of immediate network just to get any experience and all experience kind of took any opportunity that came our way. Um, we're doing pretty awful stuff for kind of theatre companies, colleges, corporate interview stuff, but kind of gaining experience with equipment, kind of client relationships, all that kind of stuff, which just, I guess, just needed time and experience just to grow. Um, but really, the the first year or 18 months, that was definitely kind of the hardest period in the journey, definitely for me, just because we basically started with no 
industry knowledge, no real contacts. So it was, yeah, we like doing it. We think we're quite good. That was about it. Um, so yeah, it took about that, that first 18 months to really build some good initial contacts and repeat clients um, that, yeah, we could have really learned from. And I guess then at the same time as that, Marcus was working as an editor, um, kind of gaining some of that industry experience, which we could then build on later. But I'll pass over to him to tell you more. So hello, I'm Marcus. I'm the oldest brother. Um, so yeah, whilst Luke was doing all that, I started working at a sort of middle-sized production company in Soho um, as a runner initially, and then slowly worked my way up to be their sort of in-house video editor. I was doing sort of it was mostly fashion and beauty stuff. Uh, gained a load of industry experience, hundreds of editing hours, which was useful. Um, and yeah, it was great to work within a company. I guess a much larger version of what we ultimately would want to create ourselves. So yeah, I think that was quite really crucial in what we're doing. In the evenings and weekends, I was going back and working with Luke on our brother stuff. So yeah, it was pretty intense working essentially two jobs, um, but really good fun. And slowly uh, things were coming together. We're getting you know, some better projects coming in. I was due a pay rise at that production company. And instead of taking that, I negotiated uh, whether I could take four days in the week instead of five with them and just stay on the same pay. They were really, really cool about that. Let me let me do that and I could be flexible with which day I took off each week. So we basically planned our brother shoots around that. So suddenly we had two of us every week available for a shoot day or an edit day. So yeah, again, suddenly we were able to do bigger and better projects than we could before. Um, and yeah, gradually it built up and we finally reached the day where I could hand in my notice. We, we were sort of could somehow financially uh, support both of us. And suddenly, yeah, we had two of us working full time. So uh, th again, that was a massive step up for us. Uh, projects continued to get better and better. And we started to also build a bit of a network of freelance collaborators around us, which I think was you know, one of the biggest takeouts of sort of, I don't know, how we um, could take on bigger and bigger projects. So at this point, we'd started working with slightly bigger clients like Red Bull, we were doing some of their sort of action sports events, you know, some of which required six or eight crew. And just with the two of us, we could you know, get a decent sized crew together. And that's sort of still how we approach today. We're just the four of us with someone who's doing you know, big shoots with 30 or so crew. Um, so yeah, from there, we'd sort of figured out pretty obviously that most of the brands and agencies were London based. We were still down in the depths of Kent at our parents' house, just in a tiny little edit suite. Uh, sh shopped around a bit for a friend of a friend. We found a little co-working sort of studio space in Peckham, made the move. That was about three years ago. And yeah, we've been Peckham based ever since. We're now in Peckham levels, which some of you might have heard about. Um, and yeah, it's really been almost an up since then. Um, our youngest brother, Hugo, joined back in September, and Adam joined as well, so there's suddenly now four of us. Um, and as part of that, Hugo's big thing is music, so we've really started focusing on production music in both our own videos and other people's, and I'll let him get onto that. Uh, hi, yeah, so I'm Hugo, I'm the youngest brother. And uh, yeah, so while all this was going on, I was down at uni in uh, Falmouth in Cornwall uh, doing a music technology degree. Um, so unlike the other two, slightly relevant. Um, and in my final year, things kind of took off almost in the house music scene. Um, I ended up on like Radio 1 and uh, going out of uni, I managed to kind of pursue that as a career for two years. Um, got some like really good opportunities and things are still happening, like still releasing tracks. I've got a like weekly radio show. Um, but I also wanted to fully stay involved with, with Brother. So any kind of weekends or uh, any days that I could take off when there was a shoot or any projects that I could get involved with, I just uh, like 100% just commit to it and do it. Um, it kind of, it never felt like too much of a job just because it had, it had always been a hobby. Um, and I guess now it's kind of the same situation. Um, and so music's always kind of been such a massive part of, of our videos. 
Um, I don't know if, if, if you feel the same way, but if you watch a video which has like really good soundtrack or really good sound design, it often kind of stands up above the rest. Um, and so for us, we wanted to make it a massive part of what we are uh, with my background. And um, kind of a, a big flaw for us as a small production company is there's never really a big budget to, to get the music that you really want to get. And there's only a few uh, kind of well-known, uh, affordable kind of music libraries. Um, so you end up watching a video on YouTube or like Channel 4 and you're hearing the same tracks just time and time again. And it just kind of kills the originality and the creativity of your work, I guess. Um, so we kind of, we'd been using some of my own tracks for a few projects, um, kind of old stuff from uni or something that I'd made which just nothing had happened with. Um, and so I kind of just made the plunge to join brother, well not the plunge, just <laughs> wanted to do it, um, to join full time uh, and my own stuff would kind of coincide with it and it, the two jobs just kind of work together and it really flowed quite well. Um, so now today I'm producing kind of as, as much music for our clients as we can um, and we worked out it's, it's about 80% or so are really keen on that idea of having uh, having original music to their video which is affordable and gives it um, kind of proper creativity as opposed to having to go back to those old music libraries. Um, and so for me it's kind of it suddenly became apparent that if this is solving a problem for us, maybe it could solve a problem for other people like us. And uh, kind of a few months after joining, we're now producing music for other production companies. And um, yeah, it's just really benefited us as a company to properly harness uh, kind of all our talents combined and take what would be kind of four freelancers to like another level, which is been good. That's a picture of all four of us. Um, so I wanted to try and leave you with something that I felt was the kind of the best bit of advice we've been given over the last year or so. Um, so I thought I'd share it and hopefully it helps some of you guys too. So this was by a, one of the business mentors of ours who said to us that what will determine how our company grows and what our company is over the next couple of years is we based entirely on what we don't do. Um, and what she meant was that we've all got a limited amount of time that we can work on things. Um, and the projects that we don't take on, the ones that we turn down, will determine the amount of free time we've got to actually work on the things we do want to do. Um, the kind of things that say to the world about us, the kind of things we want to say to the world. Um, so really having that courage to say no to something, which is really hard because you know, you've got a month where you just need some money and someone's offering you an opportunity to earn some money um, or it's a friend or a friend and it's really awkward or it's just a pushy client who's kind of forcing you into doing something um, and what she was really telling us was to kind of build up that bravery and kind of have the have the courage to go no to certain projects to make sure we have the time to do the stuff we do want to do um, and the stuff that's going to take us forward so the the way we now do this uh, is through our fame fortune and fun triangle um, we didn't invent it, so can't claim any credit for that. We stole it off someone. I also can't remember who we stole it off, so I can't give them the credit for it either. Sorry about that. Um, it's a really, I could have put a picture up in there, but it's really basic, so I didn't. It's just a triangle. Um, there's fun at the top of it. So basically every project has to tick at least, everything we do, everything we spend our time on, has to tick at least two things on this triangle. Fun's at the top of it, that's very self-explanatory. It has to be something that we're all going to enjoy doing. Um, fortune, so basically has to pay us something. Um, and pay us at a level that, we've set our rates at. You know, as creators, we have kind of the rates we'd like to work at, and it has to achieve those. Um, and fame is kind of fame and learning. So either it has to teach us something, be something we haven't done before, something new, or something that's going to give us some personal PR, going to create an opportunity for us to get more work off the back of it. Maybe it's something that's an exciting client and we can shout about it. Um, and this is how we assess everything we do, everything we spend our time on. So the exact same for tonight. Um, so if you take the triangle on us standing up here, we're not getting paid for it, so not taking that one. Um, <laughs> thanks. It was a. Uh, it's fine. We're still here. Um, it was likely to be fun, so that was a good tick for us. Um, and it has the opportunity.
to be a learning or fame opportunity. Like we're stood in front of all these people here. We've got no idea what everyone does. It could create a future opportunity. It could just be a learning for us giving a talk to a big group of people. Um, so it's something we spend our time on, and that's how we assess everything we do. So please feel free to steal that off whoever I stole that off. Um, and hopefully that's a, a something that's a, a helpful way of you assessing the things you don't do. Um, so I hope that's been a relatively interesting kind of overview of our last five, six years and kind of what we've been up to. Um, hopefully there's been something you can take away from it that will help you in your going forth to be a little bit more working solo. Thank you very much for your time.